The following presentation was recorded at the 2014 Southeast Linux Fest in Charlotte, North Carolina. It is licensed under a Creative Commons license. For more information, visit www.southeastlinuxfest.org. The Southeast Linux Fest would like to thank the following diamond sponsors in 2014 for helping make these videos possible. Okay, thank you all for coming to my talk today. Um, I, if this is what I'm talking about, I hope you're in the right room, I'm talking about high school tech education. Um, first, a little bit about my background. Uh, I started working in tech publishing um, about, well, the tech publishing company about 17 years ago, about 15 years ago. I started working at Sysadmin Magazine, and uh, right now I'm the, commun the community evangelist for Red Hat, uh, the upstream projects, the open source and standards team. But before this, my career had all been in tech publishing, and so I wasn't directly involved in a specific open source community, but I've done a lot of observing community and covering uh, women in tech topics, education, how we can get more diversity in tech. Meanwhile, um, I was busy raising a child um, also. So I'm a single mother. Uh, that was 17 years ago. <laughs> She's uh, out of high school now. And um, so this is an experience that we had with uh, high school programming class, her one and only high school programming class. So my daughter's entire life, I have been working in this field. And um, when I did my thesis on my master's degree a few years ago, I actually covered uh, topics involving you know, women in tech. And I've covered mentoring quite a bit and um, you know, spent a lot of time thinking about how we can increase diversity. For me, um, I, I really do think it starts back at education, early education, you know, and until we start fixing things there, it's not going to get better later. So anyway, I'm not saying that I'm the perfect mom or anything. I didn't win any awards for parenting, and this experience is based on one personal experience, one mom, one kid. Um, but I think it, it's really helpful when we talk about um, you know, improving diversity or education or anything that we have real examples, otherwise people don't really relate. So with, with my child, um, I, I did all the things that we are told are best practices for you know, increasing diversity, make sure they have mentors and role models and um, access to technology. So um, I, that's why I provide this background is to let you know that she technically would be considered privileged as far as having you know, all these things that should have made her first experience with a programming class a wonderful experience that we all think the kids should be having. You know. But that's not what happened, and this is going to be the story about what happened. So first, let me tell you a bit about my child. This is not her. She actually doesn't like it that her mother is a writer and talks about her. <laughs> so I'll, I'll try to keep her name out of it and minimize uh, you know, her too much, except for the shared experience we had with this class. Um, she just got back from India a few weeks ago. Uh, she's 17 now, almost 18. She graduated from high school two years early. She skipped sixth grade. Um, I, I skipped her over sixth grade to put her into a private school because she was um, bored, you know, kind of annoying the teachers because she thought she was smarter than them. And so I put her in a, a private school where um, she was challenged uh, a lot more and it was a better situation for her at the time. And then she wanted to go back to public school for her sophomore year. And so I did that and, and that was nice. I lived in Lawrence, Kansas and we had a real good school system and, and um, they had a, a nice selection of classes and that's what she wanted was more choices for classes. And then um, her junior year, which would have been uh, not this school year, but the one before, um, she decided that she was going to go to India and study abroad. And that meant she was going to put all of her senior level classes her second semester of her junior year. And she did it. And that's how she ended up graduating early um, and going off to India. So um, she, despite being raised by a mother who you know, spent all these years telling her how wonderful IT is and open source. And uh, in fact, for her 16th birthday, she asked for a Mac because she was sick of <laughs> being a beta tester all these years, you know. And, um, and uh, for her, that was like, you know, rebelling, I guess. I don't want to run Linux. I want a Mac. So um, anyway, so she wasn't, you know, she wasn't dying to take a programming class. She had just, you know, I had encouraged her all these years, and I really thought she'd be good at it. Um, because she's very creative and also um, very g good at um, you know, black and white thinking also. And so I thought that that's a nice combination for uh, computer science. And I thought she'd really enjoy it. Um, but she, she wasn't eager to take it. In fact, her words were, you'll be happy. I signed up for a programming class. 
you know, and I was happy, and she did it not because she really wanted to, but it fit well with her schedule, you know, and so she thought she'd give it a try. Um, so she didn't, she wasn't like a, a kid whose spirit got broken, and that's why I give you this background here. It's not, uh, she thought she'd go in and try a programming class and see how it goes. I think we see that a lot, you know, uh, with kids, and if it's not a positive experience, we can lose them right away. So I was real excited about it, you know, and so I had visions of this class where the kids would be gathered around the robots, you know, and, um, or they'd build a you know, robot out of Legos, or they would program on Raspberry Pi, or, you know, um, uh, learn how to make com computer games online, you know, or build a website, um, or make a mobile app, you know, and so I was throwing all these ideas, I'm like, oh, this is going to be so good, I can't wait to hear what you're doing, it'll be fun, we can do it together, you know, and um, so she gets home the first day, and I was like, so, what are you doing? Um, she's like, well, I'm the only girl in class. And um, the thought had never occurred to me that she'd be the only girl in class, and I should have thought that, you know? I mean, I've been the only woman at many things in my career. Um, and the other thing was, I was like, well, what are you learning? And she's like, Visual Basic. And I was like, let me Google that, you know? Because I've only worked in open source my whole career, and so I wasn't even really sure what she was talking about. And then I was like, Visual Basic? Um, I, that's just not like a super in-demand, you know, language, or it didn't sound fun, you know? I just uh, and also, I've, um, I thought, uh, having been a single mom, I mean, I knew a lot of people who didn't have a lot of money. I didn't have a lot of money as a single mom, and that seemed like something that kids couldn't really access if they weren't in the classroom, necessarily, you know? Whereas if you're doing programming in the cloud, or, you know, you can go to a library and, and log in and work on your stuff, you know, or to a friend's house or whatever. Um, anyway, so I was like, okay, maybe this will be all right. Um, but so then I asked her, why aren't there any other girls in your class? And um, she said, well, I, none of my friends had even heard of the class. So, you know, her friends didn't have a mom at home going, oh, do this, it'll be fun, you know, probably. And, um, uh, and like I said, my daughter took the class just because it fit in her schedule. It wasn't something that had been, you know, uh, promoted at school or she didn't hear other friends talking about how cool this class was or anything. In any case, um, she, at first, she, she didn't mind being the only girl in class at all. Um, she liked the guys, you know, and, and it was fun, the banter and whatever. And, and, um, and she was having a good time, and so that was great. She'd come home with some fun stories about class, you know, the banter, not necessarily what they were working on. I never once heard what they were working on. It was easy, and she was done with it very quickly, you know, and so she, you know, I, I was like, what do you do in class? And she's like, I get done early, and I'll read a book, or uh, work on other homework, or if somebody missed class, you know, I'll help them, or if they're stuck, I'll help them, and um, so, you know, she's buzzing along in the semester, getting an easy A, you know, not real excited. It's not, you know, she definitely did not get some passion sparked in this class or anything, but it was not a horrible class either at that point. Well, so I, um, like I said, she was uh, a teenager at this point, and it was her junior slash senior year, and she was about ready to head off to India for almost a year. And so we had an agreement that school year that, um, she could stay home alone when I traveled for business, you know, and I, and I had other people that would check in, but she didn't, she didn't have parties or anything. I wasn't worried about it, right? And so I, I was off at a, a business trip when I first heard about this harassment that was happening in, in the classroom. And um, I was at Supercomputing in uh, Salt Lake City a couple years ago, and, and uh, I think it was early November. Um, so she called me and I was at the booth. I was uh, working with USENIX at the time as their community manager and an editor. And so um, I took the call on the show floor, you know, and she was like, Mom, I have a problem. And I was like, she's coming to me with a problem, which she also never really did. You know, she was very good at solving her own things. And she said, the guys in class are all harassing me now. And I was like, really? And that was just so weird. You know, they all had turned on her. And um, she's like, I don't know what to do about it. And uh, she said, they, they keep saying things like, um, oops, I went the wrong way, sorry. Um, they keep saying things like, get in the kitchen and make me a sandwich. And uh, I, I just remember feeling sick in my stomach when she told me that, because the one time I have been um, horribly harassed in my, in my career was, when I said that, I was like, do you tell them we don't cook? I was trying to be funny, but um, uh, it was, I also kind of made me sick in my stomach. Um, a few years ago, when I worked at Linux New Media, I had a blog um, called The Rose Blog, and it was Ricky's um, 
open source, uh, whatever, I don't remember what it was, but it was um, a blog to um, highlight women in open source. And what I wanted to do was not talk about the problems that we were having necessarily with diversity or whatever, but I really wanted to focus on what women were doing in open source and um, the stories they had with the projects they were working on or um, calls for papers, because I wanted to see more diversity you know, in, in events. And um, I had written a blog post one day that um, made some guys mad on 4chan. And so they started leaving horrible comments. Well, they started, the very first one was, get in the kitchen and make me a sandwich. I, I have no idea what, why that is the first insult. They got thrown out in both of our cases. Um, it was very weird. But um, anyway, they started you know, harassing me on, on the comments. And then I was, started getting personal emails. You know, and and uh, I found the chat room that they were all you know, planning this. Um, barrage of uh, online harassment. So I just turned off the comments on our website, you know, and they had to be approved after that. Um, and they weren't because they were lewd. But um, anyway, it was, it made me sick at my stomach because I, the thought just had never occurred to me that um, harassment started back then, you know, like I, I could understand that not being encouraged started at high school. Um, and I had spent, you know, all these years coaching my daughter on, um, you know, uh, why, why programming would be good regardless of your career or having some understanding of how technology works will help you in any career that you have and that sort of thing. And I just never even thought, what are people t telling their boys, you know, because I didn't have a boy, I had a, a girl. And um, so I, that was what came to my mind is, what are these parents? I mean, I bet not, they aren't even telling their boys anything about this unless their parents are in IT maybe, you know. So, um, you know, she was like, what do I do? And uh, I was like, let me get back to you on that. I didn't know. Uh, I mean, I know what to do in my career, and I've coached women on how to handle harassment at their jobs, you know, but high school, you couldn't pay me to go back there. It's not fun, you know, and I don't want to scare anybody here, but it's, it's not something that you really want to redo, right? And uh, what, how you would handle stuff in high school is not hopefully how you'd handle it as an adult. And so um, I said, let me, let me check with some people. And um, I know a lot of uh, women in, in the field also who are programmers and, um, you know, in fact, one of the people I reached out to, she's, uh, uh, she contributes to the Linux kernel, you know, and, and then her husband is a high school teacher. And so I, I reached out to them and a, a couple other women to get, you know, their feedback. And um, so I went back to her and I said, you know, I uh, talked to these friends and they had some suggestions, you know, you did the right thing by coming to me. and she. Um, you know, I said, if you want, I can go and talk to the teacher. Um, if you want, I can come and talk to the class, and I'll bring some free magazines and books to hand out, you know, some tech stuff, and, and um, talk about careers and stuff, and I'll slide in the harassment thing, and they won't know that, you know, and maybe it'll be cool that uh, I can slide that in. And, and then I was like, or I could have uh, some, a, a guy in town, a developer uh, from Lawrence, come and talk to the class, because um, Lawrence has a really nice tech community. It's a college town. And uh, the, all the men I knew in Lawrence who worked in IT were also very interested in, in mentoring and helping kids, you know, and so they, any of them would have been happy to do this. And so I presented everything to her, and she was like, okay, let me think about it. And ultimately, I did feel like this was her decision. She's, I'm preparing to send her off into the world, and if she can't handle, you know, making decisions in this one class, we're both in trouble. And so I did let her think about it. So in this situation, how do you think she should have handled this? Anybody have suggestions on what you would tell your kid or? Nope. I'll tell you how she handled it. The, the first thing she did, which I think is the right thing to do, is she spoke directly to the kids and asked them to stop. And, um, and you know, was very firm about it. She didn't joke around. She was like, it's harassment. It's not fun. It's uncool, whatever. And that did not work. And so, the next thing she did was she told a parent, which I also think was a, a good logical second step for her. And, uh, you know, and I, I gave her a bunch of ideas and, and did what I could. Now, had she been younger, I would have gone directly to the teacher and I would have been there, you know? And in fact, the year before, I would have done that. But like I said, this was her last year before going into the world. So our deal was if I don't hear from your teachers, they won't hear from me without your permission, you know? And she was doing well, so they weren't hearing from me. So the next thing she did um, was she, she talked to the teacher about it. Again, I totally think she did the right thing here. I would, have, I would have thought that was perfectly logical next step. And she even told the teacher that she would be happy, because my daughter's 
she, uh, she's 5'10", and she's uh, a competent, you know, smart woman, so she was like, I'll get in front of the class and talk to them about harassment and, and the lack of diversity in IT, you know, and, and uh, I was like, okay, well, that was cool. I wouldn't have thought of that, you know, that was very cool, the thing to suggest. Um, and so, um, yeah, the next thing was uh, she got called into the principal's office. And I didn't know this until after she graduated from high school. She didn't tell me this part until it, later because she got called into the principal's office and um, uh, she wasn't in trouble necessarily, but that she felt that way, that you know, the principal said um, that it wasn't her place to get in front of the class you know, and, um, and address the class and that sort of thing. So at this point, you know, I, was, I was really surprised to find this out after the fact that she had been called into the principal's office and at that point nobody had ever contacted me. Even if the, the person is a senior at that point, if a harassment is so severe that they're getting called into the principal's office. Mind you, my kid, not the harasser, <laughs> my, the one getting harassed got called in the principal's office. Um, and all this is very interesting to me now because we also see this as women in tech. This is um, one of the issues with women who report harassment. Um, it's very risky and scary to do that because often it's the person who reports it that has a fallout and not the people who are doing the harassing. And when I say that, um, I, I need to put an asterisk there and say, um, this isn't a horrible field to work in. This does happen, um, it, uh, but overall, you know, it's a, a wonderful field to work in, but harassment is still an issue. So how, the school, what do they do about the harassment? Absolutely nothing. I heard nothing from them. She saw no improvement in class. Um, you know, she went ahead and, and finished. She only had a few weeks left until, you know, the end of the semester, which was, uh, and she wasn't going to be taking another programming class after this because this had not been a fun, exciting class, obviously, and, and um, there was no incentive for her to take another programming class after this, and I didn't hear from the teachers or anything. So she graduates and goes off to India last, last summer, and, um, and that was the end of it. Um, then I, I was at work uh, sometime last fall, I think, and uh, whenever the TechCrunch, um, they had a, a conference, and, and it, it made the news because um, there were some uh, people going up on stage and presenting their mobile apps that they had developed. And it wasn't just adults. Um, there were kids there who had made some cool mobile apps, including a young girl who made a, a mobile app. And I think what it did was it uh, helped arrange play dates with friends, you know, and it was, so it was kind of cool. Um, but unfortunately, she got to go on stage after, um, I guess, two uh, well, a man and then a couple of guys had presented their apps, and they were really stupid. I mean, they were lewd and offensive. You know, one was a, I believe it was called Tit Stare, and it was basically a Instagram, but it was for taking photos of women's chests and posting them. You know, and why anybody would have thought that was clever or worth getting presenting on stage is beyond me. But somebody thought that was a good idea, I guess. But imagine this girl's parents as they're sitting there, you know, going, "My kid's following that. I'm mortifying." You know. So I read that online um, one morning and um, was a livid. And I was like, don't angry blog, don't angry blog, you know? <laughs> and so, because uh, I've been writing for a long time and I have a good policy about not angry blogging and I was like, go to the gym. So I went to the gym and I got home and I was still mad and I angry blogged. Uh, <laughs> but because I have been doing this for a long time, um, it was very articulate, you know, and uh, I was, you know, I wasn't just gonna write a rant. Uh, I wanted to have an argument in there and, uh, so I was like, uh, I told my kid's story in this blog post, and, um, and it wasn't just a rant, like I said, I, had, I provided seven tips for what this teacher could have done that would have made this experience much better. It wouldn't have cost any money or much time, and, and this could have been a good experience for um, a girl or um, a minority student, you know, or a, a particularly shy student or a student with disabilities, somebody who would have been the other in class, you know. Uh, well, shortly after that, I found out that, it, that everybody was reading my article. Like suddenly, people in my family knew what I did for a living, you know, and they'd never known before, you know. And, and my cousin, who's a teacher, was like, "Oh my God, you're a writer," you know, because she read this. And um, so, this is the only article I've ever written that made me cry, and it's because I, I was like, "Oh my God, my daughter's going to kill me," because <laughs> she, like I said, she doesn't she doesn't want me acknowledging that you know she that I have a child at all in anything I write, and. Um, so that was the, the thing that was most stressful to me. And uh, um, so just on Reddit, you know, it, it, 
had, this was just one of the places it got posted on Reddit, and uh, it was on uh, a, a bunch of other sites. Uh, Hacker News, I think it made the homepage for Hacker News, and, and uh, you know, I was getting calls from uh, the folks at USENIX going, um, why didn't you tell us you were going to get all this traffic? I mean, we would have done stuff, you know, because the servers were freaking out. And I said, well, I, um, I told you I wrote a post that might get read, <laughs> you know? I thought a, a few extra people would read it. I had no idea it was going to be such a big deal. And, and I had, you know, I've written articles over the years I've been very proud of that I spent, you know, a week of research, you know, and this was something I knocked out in 45 minutes. And I was like, of course, it's the thing that's most read in my entire career, <laughs> you know? But people could relate to it, you know? And, and people felt things. Teachers were emailing me and, and students, you know, and college students and, and you know, parents were emailing me. Um, so, here I'll, I'll present the seven suggestions I had for teaching high school programming. And mind you, I'm one mom with one kid. I'm not a, an educator, you know, but I, these, I was like, from my experience with my kid, this is the feedback I would have given you. So the first one was recruit students to take your class. Because I, like I said, my, my kid said none of her friends had heard of the class. Nobody knew about it, you know, and this would be a situation, you know, as a teacher where it wouldn't be hard to, you know, go and tell other teachers, you know, over coffee or whatever, can you let, you know, the students in your class know about this programming class or maybe can I come in and have five minutes at the beginning of the class, you know, to let them know when they're signing up for classes why they might want to take my class, you know, and maybe tell them about some, you know, cool careers you can do and this is a good jumping off point or how there's a lot of demand for programmers, whatever. Make some effort, you know, um, to actually promote to promote the class as an option. Um, the second one was to set the tone from the first day of class, you know. Um, I think, uh, you know, setting the tone from the very beginning, this is a positive, collaborative atmosphere, apparently not with Visual Basic, but had they been teaching an open source programming uh, language, you know, they could have said open source is very collaborative and, and so, um, you know, people should be friendly and working together uh, and uh, polite and, you know, and that sort of thing. Um, outline, explain, and enforce an anti-harassment policy. Um, I, I personally don't know how effective those are, but um, in uh, high school situations, you know, bullying is a huge issue, and so this would not be so crazy to put in a high school class, you know, and talk about harassment, and um, uh, particularly since it does start back there, and that it is a big issue in, in tech. You know, we have a uh, um, very small percentage of diversity in, in women, and so this is a, a still a hot topic, and this would be a, a good thing to introduce to the class and just have zero tolerance, which I, w I don't know why they don't. I mean, I kind of thought everybody did in high school anyway with bullying. You know, that's such an issue now, but not in the 70s when I grew up in. <laughs> you were supposed to get bullied then. Um, don't be boring. Um, I, you know, um, programming to me is like Shakespeare or philosophy. If, if you're sitting in class and you're bored, it's the teachers doing it wrong, you know? And I, I dropped a philosophy class in college because I was, at the first 30 minutes, I was like, I can't stay awake, and this is not how philosophy is supposed to be. It's supposed to be, you know, really exciting, and that's how programming should be. And if, if it's a boring class, you're doing it wrong. Um, and then pay attention. If you know that you have um, an other in your classroom, you know, one kid that's standing out as um, not fitting in, you know, um, like the only girl or um, the only exchange student or, you know, whatever, um, make sure you're paying attention. Um, the first day of class, my, the, the teacher said to my kid, I'm, you know, I'm really sorry you're the only girl in class. So he was aware from the beginning that, uh, and said it in front of all the other kids, you know, that, um, that she stood out as being different than all the other kids in class. And then throughout the semester, check in. Well, he didn't have to check in. Um, my, my daughter was telling him during the semester that the kids were harassing her. But, you know, with other students, not everyone's going to go and report, you know, harassment or that the class sucks or anything. And so it's good to check in with the students. And then finally, um, follow up after the semester. You know, if you're trying to create a good uh, atmosphere, make sure that you have, they do this in college generally, that you have, uh, uh, you could evaluate your teachers, you know, and the, and the content, and it's anonymous. And I don't know why you wouldn't want to do that to improve your class, you know. And none of this costs anything that I was suggesting. None of it was hugely time consuming, but this was, you know, these were my suggestions I whipped together and threw out in this article. Well, like I said, I didn't, I didn't know that so many people would read the article. I thought, you know, we'd have 300 page views or something. And um, so the comments started rolling in. And because I'm a professional, I don't read comments. <laughs> I just don't. It's a, it's a horrible thing to do. But um, I did have to read all the ones that came into our website, 
because we um, did not allow anonymous comments or uncivil comments on the USENIX blogs. And so I had to read them and approve them. And out of all of those, there was only one I did not approve. And it was a, a guy who was claiming to have um, tracked down where my child went to school and had called, you know, and talked to the principal. And um, I, I don't believe that any of that was true, but um, whether or not it was, it was creepy. And so that was the one I did not approve. So um, I'll show you some of the comments that came in because uh, when I proposed this talk, I said, and if it's accepted, I'll go look at some of the comments and show them to you. <laughs> because uh, here's an interesting thing. When, um, when you work in, in tech um, and uh, you write about these issues you know, of uh, diversity or harassment or any of that, um, it doesn't matter how you write about it, how nice you are, professional, or what your outlet is. Um, it, causes some kind of uproar and you'll get a bunch of backlash on it. And I see this often. So this was one person's suggestion to what I should have taught my daughter to do was to hit the guys that were harassing her. Which um, I had taught her how to defend herself, but um, I had never encouraged her to hit someone if she didn't like what they were saying. You know, it was more physical. You know, if somebody attacks you, here's a maneuver, but that's it. So um, I thought that was a bad idea. Um, here's another brilliant suggestion that rolled in. Why didn't I call the parents of all the kids? Um, can you imagine the horror if your mother called, um, you know, your junior, senior year of high school and called, and your son is harassing my kid? She would have, you know, wouldn't have fixed anything for sure, and I wouldn't have been able to go home. My kid would have killed me. So that was a dumb idea somebody suggested. <laughs> I got lots of this. This is so close to my own experiences, it's painful. I got that from women who are in the field, and I, and I got it from a lot of college students who were studying tech. I mean, people who got past this anyway and dealt with it, made it through high school, and went on. <clears throat> um, this was another one I should have talked to the teacher. And like I said, had she been younger, I would have talked to the teacher. But um, if uh, you're about to send your kid out into the world, call me old school, but I think your kid should be able to make it through the high school, you know, and be able to learn how to fight their own battles at that point. I certainly would have gone in and talked to the teacher had that been what my child wanted me to do, but, you know, she felt like she had handled it on her own. And so when I wrote this, um, I didn't, I still didn't go talk to the teacher. I don't, the teacher's probably a perfectly nice person. He's probably a good teacher. I don't know. You know, maybe this is a class he doesn't want to teach and he gets forced to teach. That happens a lot. I had a football coach who taught my history class. It was awful, you know, but um, he was probably a nice guy, you know, but so I, but I thought, you know, I, I, not everybody has a platform like I'm able to, and I thought, I'm going to write about this. This is something I've been passionate about for a long time, and um, I'm going to share this experience. And uh, so it was much more important to me to get it out there than to go talk to one teacher. So yeah, more than 2,000 comments on, you know, one link alone, and then um, more than 100, I think, came in through to the USENIX site that um, somebody, uh, actually a lot of people I think thought it was a man writing the article, which, I, you know, my name's Ricky, so I, I wasn't offended. <laughs> you know, that happens a lot anyway. I get Mr. Inslee all the time. Got it last week. Um, but I, I do also think that uh, not as many women ha might have the platform I have to be able to write online, so that's also part of the assumption probably that goes into it. Um, and then here's, you know, that it, devolves into generic advice for teachers from a non-teacher who still thinks he has the right to explain how to do your job. Well, as a parent, you do have every right to go in and talk to a teacher, you know, and tell them. And I'd, my, my daughter had had a math teacher in junior high who, um, and she was having some issues, and she was very good at math, but she was having issues with this one class, and um, he had me come in, and when I told him, well, this is how she learns best, he thanked me and was happy, you know, because that, he was like, now that I know that, I'll be able to, you know, help her uh, with this you know, she learns better this way. So this was also bad advice. Um, doesn't paint an empathetic picture when it goes to great lengths to first state how insanely privileged the daughter is. That was the point. You know, my, uh, uh, she was privileged, and that's why I am the article. I gave my background that I worked in tech, that my daughter, you know, for spring break got to go to DrupalCon because I was a single mom, and I was like, hey, guess what? You get to go to Colorado for spring break because I'm working, you know? and. Um, She's been to uh, Federated Conferences Week because she was on summer vacation and I was working, you know, and uh, she, was, she went to OzCon because I was working and I was like, hey, you get to go to Portland, you know, you can check out colleges. So, yeah, she was privileged. That was the point. And uh, not most single girl going into a, a classroom full of boys are going to have the kind of encouragement, you know, and background and access to technology that she's always had. 
oh, my dad, I felt so bad for him. Um, so I went to his house for dinner, and um, he came up and put his hand on my shoulder, and he's like, are you okay? I was like, yeah, why? And he goes, that article. And I was like, yeah? And he goes, the comments. And I was like, oh, dad, you, you did not read the comments. <laughs> yeah. And so he, just, he felt like I must be devastated. And I was like, God, no, dad, nobody reads comments. And so one of them was this lady, sounds like a real a-hole, and this is the kind of stuff that my poor dad was, I cannot believe he read all this stuff. And then um, the tone makes my skin crawl. That was this classic tone argument that you see that. You don't, you don't see it if, when men write. You never see someone saying, I didn't like his tone. You know, and it doesn't matter how snarky or sarcastic he might be, but you see it with women. And um, I'm, I'm snarky and sarcastic all, and all the time and talking, and so I really reeled it in for this article, you know, and, and I, it wasn't that bad, but um, it made someone's skin crawl. Um, yeah, and I feel uh, like a good point might have been made if the author wasn't so obsessed with her and her daughter's resume for half the article. Um, again, I felt like that was important to provide that background. And if she were um, best, if, if I hadn't beat up the Visual Basic, people really wanted to defend it, you know. And there weren't a lot of there weren't a lot of them, but the people who wanted to defend it were very passionate about it. And in hindsight, I went way too easy on it, you know. I am um, I barely mentioned it in the article, and, and I could have devoted many paragraphs to how that was the dumbest thing ever. That you know, this was what they were showing in class. Um, so yeah, I went easy on it. Uh, most condescending and immature letters I've ever stumbled upon. That was, no, it wasn't. I hope not. <laughs> if it is, you didn't get out very much. Um, I got right, I know. I was like, how did you end up on Reddit? <laughs> and this was the best one. This is my favorite. I, I want to get that on a t shirt someday. Pathetic, self aggrandizing <laughs> waffle. Right? It's, I like that one. That was awesome. So that was worth reading all the comments. Um, and then somebody um, wrote, let's see, are we going? Oh, wait, oh, yeah, here's one more. Uh, whoever wrote this should take a slap in the face and learn to communicate respectfully with others. I hope they were trying to be funny because, <laughs> uh, yeah, communicate respectfully with others after you slap me in the face. All right. So, yeah, somebody else put, uh, talk to people in a position to actually do something about it, like the teacher. Um, well, I did. I, I wrote a blog post about it, and uh, it, it, it got out there. You know, I mean, like I said, uh, people who I had known for years and years all of a sudden knew what I did for a living, you know. Uh, um, my cousin Nikki, the, you know, high school teacher was like, oh my God, you're a writer, you know, and uh, people in my neighborhood who had no idea what I did, people in my community, you know, moms in my community that weren't teachers or in tech that were just moms and interested in education for their kids, uh, you know, were emailing me and messaging on Facebook going, oh my gosh, I, you know, I read this article and then realized it was you. And um, so, and then and last weekend actually at Texas Linux Fest, I had a, a, a guy that came up and um, told me that his college uh, computer science professor, who was a woman, read the whole article in front of the whole class, you know, and so um, it, I had no idea any of this was going to happen when I, uh, you know, did my rage blog, <laughs> but um, hopefully the, the one computer science teacher that my kid had also read it, but in any case, plenty of other people did, and then p plenty of people have talked about it, not just with me, but with each other and in their communities. So uh, that's our story, and that's why I'm sharing it to let you know uh, that this really still happens, and we have a long way to go to uh, improve diversity here if we're still having such a problem in turning off students uh, in school. Any questions or comments? I left a little time for discussion. Yes. It was all. I that's like I said. I, I didn't go meet with the teacher. I didn't you know. And so um, all I know is that's all they did you know. And that was really surprising to me um, because they're so. I mean you don't a teacher can even phone it in at this point when there are all these online classes and stuff where kids could really tailor their own education in a class you know and not even, the teacher wouldn't have to do much. And each kid could be teaching themselves based on their interests, even you know. But to have one thing that they do, and, and they're not getting to create anything, and it's this basic coding. I mean, 
there's so many options now where you can learn to program and do something cool in the process, you know, like making you end up with a game or a website or a robot, you know, or any kind of a thing. This was, this was how I learned basic programming 20 some years ago and I, can, I was shocked, so. Not useful, I, you know, I don't know where she'll ever have the chance to use that again. Any other questions? You, you had one, right? Okay. Yeah, it's, um, it's hard to believe. I mean, we're going to be awful behind if that's how we're teaching computer science. Yes? So uh, other than Visual Basic, do you have a suggestion for a language of Well, um, I think it should be free. I mean, I think it should be something that kids can access regardless of their income and it, regardless of whether they have internet or a computer at home because a lot of kids don't, and that's a huge assumption. But, if you think that every kid has one at home, they don't. And so it should be something they can go into the library, not necessarily school, you know, or to a friend's house and be able to at least get online, you know, and there's tons of free stuff online. So I don't have a particular thing, but I, I mean, I do think it should be free and uh, something kids can access regardless of their um, home situation. And I think um, if you really want kids to get into it, it should be something that they're into. And that means there should be some options, you know, because. Uh, kids don't, I don't learn the same way other people learn, kids don't learn the same way, and since there's so um, many things you can do, I mean, there's, why wouldn't you present a few things in a classroom, you know, and let somebody learn how to do a mobile app, you know, um, who wants to do that, is, and the, all the kids are into their phones, you know, or build a website or make a game, you know. I don't, I don't see how you'd have to pick one, you know, because I don't know. I know, t I know in high school they have these weird standards and all that stuff, so that is an issue they're going to have to deal with. But um, I think you get, if you had to do visual basic, the kids had plenty of time to read and be bored also, so they could have also been doing this other stuff. So that's a non-answer, but no, I don't have a perfect language. I think that th there are many options and you should do whatever the kids are into. So, yes? Uh, have you ever heard of uh, tapestry? No. Okay, I will look into that. I hadn't heard of it. Thank you. Um, and you had a question? Uh, I felt kind of lucky that my daughter was willing to go and tell me when she was harassed in high school. And uh, it was a senior. And um, I, I don't know if I did something wrong or not, but I found a way that I could get singled out with that senior <laughs> and, and creatively explain that I didn't really want to have to have a problem with it. Mm -hmm. Right, and I, I do, I, I do think that, you know, uh, something should have been done with all the boys, and I can't say for sure nothing was, I, but my daughter saw no change in the class, um, and like I said, we had an agreement, um, you know, being raised by a single mom, you know, I, I did really raise her to be pretty independent and self-sufficient, you know, and since I was sending her to India, um, I wanted to make sure she could fight her own battles, and that's why I did not go um, and talk to the, the teacher, you know. Um, but she did come to me, and uh, I was glad I at least knew about it. I'd like to agree that the year abroad is a really tremendous thing for me for college as well. I sent my daughter to Peru for a year. It was a great experience for her to get some independence. Yeah, it was a great experience. And also, um, when I wrote this, a lot of people misunderstood. Um, and, and there are many follow-up articles um, you know, where people linked to this and said you know, that this experience um, uh, you know, killed a, a girl's desire to go into tech or whatever, and that's not what happened. In fact, uh, the career she's looking at is very um, tech-oriented, you know, and uh, um, it's not programming. She's looking at, some, at something else. I don't want to give away her business, but um, it didn't kill a girl's desire. Um, it this kind of experience certainly could, you know, um, 
but my daughter, like I said, she's going to do whatever she wants to do, and so she made it through the class and got an A and went on and did her stuff. So I think there's no, yes? Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yes. As a high school teacher, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll echo that. Thank you. And it's, that's an article I actually read it to my classes. You got to read it. I didn't realize. I never made a connection with the man. Okay. Thank you. So, good job on that. Thank you for writing it. And so, yeah. That, and on another note, some of the comments try to summarize those because we don't have another black. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Um, well, then I'll ask you, since you're a teacher, um, how practical are the suggestions I gave as a parent? I, I think they're very practical, and, and, and I'm being idealistic here. There are things that you shouldn't have had to tell the teacher. Mm -hmm. I see it, too. It's something that you know, I wish I had a, a quick solution to my own game. But that's, that's just something that you shouldn't have to tell a high school teacher that, hey, there's a kid that's, that's going to be marginalized. Well, and, you know, my article, um, I, there were some people that um, were very defensive about me bashing teachers, but my article certainly didn't. Um, like I said, my cousin's a teacher, and um, uh, we had almost all positive experiences with teachers, my, my kid's entire uh, uh, life, you know. I mean, in, in Lawrence, Kansas, the teachers, I think, are exceptional. The schools are exceptional, and that's one of the reasons I stayed, you know. And um, so I certainly was not bashing on the teacher. And like, I'm guessing he did not want to be teaching the class, you know, and I know that happens. You get stuck in a class and you have, that you have to do as opposed to it actually being your area, you know, so. Um, is there other questions over here? Yes. So one of your tips is uh, don't be boring. And do you have some specific suggestions on, on that as far as tech education goes? Okay, um, he asked if I had suggestions on how not to be boring. Well, my colleague Ruth back there, for example, um, is a Raspberry Pi enthusiast and gave a talk here, and that's um, a really simple, that it was created to help educate um, you know, kids in computer science and um, high school or college, I think, in particular. But um, something like that's very fun, and there's a bazillion things you can do with it. You know, um, So uh, it, things like that, where they, I think they have their hands on stuff. I'm, I have always learned better if I see stuff. Like if it's, um, I've never been able to teach myself anything uh, like programming related by reading it. You know, or by repeating it, you know, on paper or repeating it just on the screen. I have to see it, an output, like on a website, you know, that I changed code here and this is what it looked like over here, you know. So um, occasionally, you know, I, I, I had to hope that she was going to do one of those cool things like make the robots that move or something, you know, like that, because there's a whole lot that goes into it and then you end up with this little cool thing. But. I just don't know how you can make it boring. That's the thing. I feel like you have to go out of your way to make computer science boring, you know? So, yes? So when I, when I learned programming, uh, I learned from Craig Yule, who probably was one of the first programmers or something. That's what I thought when I was in high school. Um, but I never thought that he was a very good teacher, but then I realized that he really was. And one of the things he did was he used his lectures for only like 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And yeah, you would. Uh, it, it should be very hands-on. Um, so yeah. Uh, yes.
So I went on Coursera and signed up for every programming class I could find. And I will say that most of them were mind-numbingly boring. Mm -hmm. They were unbelievably boring. But I found one, and the whole reason it intrigued me, it was, uh, it was done by Rice University, it was uh, Python programming to build games. And I love mm -hmm. games. I love puzzles. And it was incredibly challenging. It was very collaborative. But the point is, if you want to make education not boring, make it something that kids want to do. Right. What kid wants to learn how to grep out, I'm, you know, to create a Python program that pulls, that makes a database for a hotel? Right. Who cares? Nobody wants to do that, you know, unless you're a database programmer that works in hotels, and you probably don't want to do that necessarily. You have other interests that you do it as a hobby. Right. <laughs> it's something that's fun that kids will do. And, you know, if you make the class challenging enough, there's not enough time for harassment. Is my frank opinion. I mean, there's obviously needs to be set a tone, there needs to be set expectations. There needs to be encouragement from parents, frankly, to have their, their girls go into IT, go into Bird. My sister uh, went through a whole lot of that in high school. And very fortunately for the guys in her class, I was in another continent at the time. But, you know, it's very challenging to do these things properly. And honestly, there's a lot of teachers out there that are just lazy if they come up with one program. Well, and I, I agree with what you're saying when you said that um, if, if they're busy enough, there's no time for harassment. Um, I have to wonder, in hindsight, if part of the harassment wasn't because she was very good at it and, some, you know, and she was trying to help some of the boys. And, um, uh, you know, one thing, if the kids were working on individualized projects, you know, that were catering to their personal interests, they wouldn't be competing over all doing the exact same thing, you know? And, and I, I could see kids be more interested in sharing what they're doing and talking about the different projects, you know? Because then they're learning off each other also. I shouldn't, I should just shut up and go teach sometime because I, I think it would be really fun, you know? It's just not my area, but um, uh, yeah. Right. No. And that's what I was saying. I, 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 was, I never bashed on high school teachers because it is a job that I don't actually want. And uh, I never felt qualified to teach my child. And that's why, you know, she, I didn't homeschool. I, I thought that, you know, there, there were people better qualified to be teaching my child, you know. Um, so, yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't you can't prevent it if you're going to um, allow it to to grow and go on. Definitely, I see what you're saying, though. Um, there was another question. Yes. Right. So it was more, they didn't have the same as a project system. I think we're probably mostly on agreement that our entire education system could use a, a reboot. <laughs> <laughs> But that was beyond the scope of my one post, definitely. Um, but I, I agree with you that that, um, I think, is uh, ultimately a much better system than what we currently have. It's too um, little check marky, you know, and kids don't fit like that. My daughter, I, like I said, I had to make changes as, uh, to her and switch her to different schools based on what her needs were, you know, um, because no one school or, you know, curriculum was fitting her. So any other questions or? Yes. I, I think it's an interesting Well, see, and that's, 
Right, and that's a big assumption though, because my daughter, we didn't have that at home. She had, she'd been running Linux since elementary school, and uh, um, you know, and then they're the, the kids that don't have, or they have it illegally, maybe you know, but or they just don't have have it at home at all. So. Um, Well, that's where you would be looking at, um, it would be results based, you know, where you, um, you know, one idea off the top of my head would be where, um, you know, you come up with a plan, you know, like you do in grad school, for example, for a project or, you know, thesis, you come up with a plan and what the results are going to be and how you're going to get there. And that would be a good way, I think, to teach a computer science class too, where, you know, kids like, I want to do a game that does this. And they come up with a plan at the beginning of the semester and then he's graded on. I, I didn't hear the last part. I'm sorry. Teaching something to, to, to a group of children is very different from teaching to something like question. Yeah, no, but I'm talking about for high school, though. I mean, they're uh, very intelligent, you know, at this point anyway, by their junior, senior years. They're um, pretty smart, and there's plenty of stuff online that is geared to high school students anyway, or junior high students, you know, that um, is uh, free uh, classes online even, you know, so I, I think that it's doable. Not maybe not for every school, you know, based on what the rules are, you know. Yes. My first programming class, we didn't touch any actual code. Mm -hmm. It was all logic, pseudocode, flowcharts, design oriented. And if that's the case, then yeah, like like you said, it doesn't matter what language you use. Here's what you have to accomplish. How do you brush your teeth? Here's the steps you have to go through to do that, and that becomes your pseudo code. And anything other than that for a first tournament class is going way beyond what they even should be doing. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to go to your first tournament class. Rather, the logic of it, the logic behind it. Captain, as well as you went up to the system. Well, back when we were in school, they didn't. Yes. Right. <laughs> we, had, we had trash agents. Yeah, we had coding forms and we wrote out everything on paper. Not touching, not touching programming, not actually programming in your programming class is a really good way to not come back. Like, you not have, to not bring people back to the second year. I did, like, I programmed, and they were on these, like, you know, big uh, five and four right, block things and things. So, so time yet. We have another question over here. Let's yes. Oh, and one thing with any computer class in any school, it's it's mostly Windows oriented anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's uh, uh, that's it's uh, it's unfair to kids who aren't going to be able to afford that kind of stuff and have it at home, you know, or be able to access it, you know, remotely. Right, yeah, the fonts were always an issue for my child because then she w she'd get home and not have the font she wanted and it would it work whatever paper she worked on at school because she'd come home and use LibreOffice, but I was like, oh, you're going to have to deal with it. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, you definitely, um, you are ahead if you're able to quickly adapt um, to different technologies and that's why um, just being able to do the one thing that you have to own certain things is not going to help you. So, yes. It seems like 
just, uh, just ignoring it is, is not the appropriate solution. Um, and, and I agree with that. But what introduces the asymmetry? Uh, and and uh, would it be better if you tried the, the so, so older people were trying to get rid of harassment? Like, why is there this asymmetry? From sometimes it's okay to just ignore it. Well, rarely I think is it okay to ignore it, and I wouldn't say that I ignored it. Um, the uh, anonymous, all anonymous people who are harassing me online at that one time um, were, I, I found the 4chan room that they were doing it in or whatever channel, and uh, they were all um, eagerly awaiting my res public response. And I certainly was not going to give them that. And I did respond by um, going forward. Uh, all of our bl blogs and posts on any of our English sites worldwide, you had to have approved comments because, you know, we wanted to have a civil, professional publications and website. And so I did have it. Um, I did respond. There was nothing I could do about anonymous people online. And it would, I mean, you can. I've never seen that turn out well, you know? They're anonymous. I mean, they'll create more accounts or whatever, and um, I don't care about them because they're not, they're insignificant to me and they weren't really going to affect any part of my life. Now, had, was it a person, if it was a person at a conference, you know, or in my office who um, was inappropriate, I certainly wouldn't ignore it. That would be face-to-face, -face, you know, and, and it would be addressed, you know, and it wouldn't just be don't talk to me, you know, which is basically what I did, you know, by turning off the comments. But um, I mean, what else? There was nothing else to do in a situation like that. I mean, 4chan, you know, the anonymous people, there's, what can you do? So, all right, who's, yes? Well, and, and there's a little difference in the situation. She was in a position where she could do something about it, which was turn off comments and so forth. When you're a student in a classroom, her daughter had Right. Yeah, and you certainly don't want it to go on in, uh, in a situation where someone is stuck, you know, like my kid would have been stuck every day, you know, and was. So, I'm in back there. Yes. Yes, you. <laughs> Well, um, yeah, I hear what you're saying. It's fortunate that you had um, access to the uh, Microsoft uh, stuff for free, you know, because a lot of kids aren't going to have that. Uh, and it's, that's it's completely free. Oh, okay, it's for everybody. Yeah, it's called DP Express, C Sharp Express, and then XNLA is free. So you can okay. Like I said, 
it's not my area of expertise. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we have, we have one minute left, so. Um. So can anybody download the OS though? That's the main thing. So, so there you have the same situation where it's not even But the interesting thing is, and you still have to know what's going on. There's a goal that there's like two people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's actually. I somehow thought that harassment was caused because of the language that was being used. I'm pretty yeah. sure even if it was an open language that was being used, the harassment would have still taken place. It isn't really an issue of yeah and that wasn't the, it was not the focus of my original article you know it, it was more about um, uh, accessibility what the kids are going to be able to do outside of, of class also and be interested in you know so but and what you were saying about the computer too it's funny um, I got a type electric typewriter when I graduated from high school as a gift and my first computer was when I graduated from college and I got through college on the electric typewriter <laughs> so okay <laughs> All right, um, I, that's, if uh, anybody wants to continue the discussion, we'll have to do it, I guess, outside because um, we're out of time and someone else is up, I believe. But thank you. Thank you. Your customers rely on your website or application. If it's slow or non-responsive, it infuriates your users and costs you money. Keeping your business-critical systems humming along requires insight into what they're doing. Your system metrics tell stories, stories that can reveal performance bottlenecks, resource limitations, and other problems. But how do you keep an eye on all of your system's performance metrics in real time and record this data for later analysis? Enter Longview, the new way to see what's really going on under the hood. The Longview dashboard lets you visualize the status of all your systems, providing you with a bird's eye view of your entire fleet. You can sort by CPU, memory, swap, processes load, and network usage. Click a specific system to access its individual dashboard, then click and drag to zoom in on choke points and get more detail. Comprehensive network data, including inbound and outbound traffic, is available on the Network tab, and Disk Writes and Free Space on the Disks tab, while the Process Explorer displays usage statistics for individual processes. The System Info tab shows listening services, active connections, and available updates. Adding Longview to a system is easy. Just click the button, copy the one-line installation command, then run the command on your Linux system to complete the process. The agent will begin collecting data and sending it to Longview. Then the graphs start rolling. Use Longview to gain visibility into your servers, so when your website or app heats up, it stays up.